What's up, Mob Crew? Today's video is a big one. It's the complete timeline of Alex Murdoch and what happened to his family on June 27th. This has all the reenactments, thanks to Steve from True Crime Web. This also has the latest data taken from the phones and the SUV and put together in one video. So I hope you stay until the end and thank you so much for watching. Welcome back to the channel everybody where we cover murder mystery to the paranormal. Alex Murdoch, who was once a respected attorney who focused on mainly injury settlements with a law firm his grandfather built, but on June 7, 2021, something terrible would go down. Alex Murdoch would arrive at his law firm earlier that day and would be confronted by his bookkeeper about money that was missing. Apparently, Alex had been stealing large amounts of money from his partners to support a heavy opiate addiction. This conversation would be interrupted by news of his father becoming terminal. Alex would then call his wife Maggie to tell her the news and that he would want her to come over later that day after her doctor's appointment to go with him to see his parents. At approximately 6.20, Alex would leave work and arrive home at approximately 6.40 at 4147 Mozilla Road, while Paul would arrive approximately 13 minutes later at 6.53 p.m. Apparently, Paul and Alex would then ride around the property for about an hour using one of the ATV slash side-by-sides. At 7.38 p.m., Paul would take a snap chat video of his father Alex which shows him wearing a blue shirt, khaki pants, and a pair of brown loafers. According to cell tower data, Maggie would arrive just a few minutes before 8 p.m. The housekeeper said that she had prepared dinner for them earlier that day so it would be assumed that they ate dinner when Maggie arrived. This is where the timeline gets split up into what Alex said happened and what most likely happened. According to Alex, after dinner, he took a nap until a little after 9 p.m. while Paul and Maggie went to the kennels using one of the ATV slash side-by-sides. Alex's phone would mysteriously show no activity between 8.09 until 9.02, meaning he most likely shut it off just after Maggie arrived at the house, which means he was getting ready to execute his plan. Maggie, Paul, and Alex would leave for the kennels on one of the ATV slash side-by-sides sometime around 8.30 p.m. And during this time, both Paul and Maggie would be active on their phones. While at the kennels, Paul would have a four-minute call with his good friend Rogan, and they would talk about Rogan's dog, Cash, who was at their kennels. Paul thought there was something wrong with Cash's tail, and decided that he would take a video of the dog to send to Rogan. This video was taken at approximately 8.44 and 49 seconds, which is a 50 second video. In this video is where we learn that not only Paul and Maggie were at the kennels, but there is a third voice heard, and that is Alex Murdoch. <laughs> He is clearly calling the family dog's name Bubba, who is a lab and likes to chase chickens. So although Alex told investigators that he was at home taking a nap during this time, he was clearly with the family just minutes before they were shot. Just a minute before the attack at 8.48 p.m., Paul would exchange two text messages to a friend and would read his last message at 8.48 and 59 seconds. At approximately 8.49, Paul at this moment was in the feed slash storage room where, in my opinion, Alex approaches and enters the feed room with the shotgun and holding it at a very low angle upwards fires one buckshot into Paul's chest. This shot was not fatal and may have surprised Alex 
as Paul would recover and come forward towards Alex, which would have caused Alex to possibly fall back just outside the feed room. And as Paul is standing in the door frame and Alex is on his back, fires a second shot, which enters Paul's left side arm and head, causing a massive fatal wound. that would cause Paul to fall forward face down. Meantime, in my opinion, just as or right before Paul is shot for the first time, Maggie is somewhere by the doghouse reading her last text message at 8.49 and 31 seconds. I would assume after hearing the shots, she would come to investigate what was going on. At approximately 8.51 p.m., Alex then retrieves the blackout AR from possibly the Polaris ATV that was close by under the red overhang. As Maggie comes around the corner, Alex would approach her from the side and shoots two shots at a downward angle where one bullet would most likely enter her thigh with the second bullet missing her and causing a crater. Perhaps at this point the AR jams, which allows Maggie to proceed back towards the doghouse where Alex would pursue her and would fire another round that would most likely enter Maggie's wrist and would exit her wrist and enter into the doghouse. Alex then would approach Maggie at a very close range, causing a possible struggle between the two, and another round would be fired, and that would enter her stomach and exit her upper side near her liver, which this bullet would then hit the chicken coop in the red overhang. That round would have caused Maggie to likely most bend over onto the ground into a praying-like position, where Alex would then move around to fire another shot, which would enter her left chest and pass up into her brain, most likely causing a fatal wound. But Alex would put another bullet into the back of her head. This is just one likely scenario using expert testimony and test controls to understand the wounds and where the casings were found. After the shootings are done, it is believed that this was over by approximately 8.53 as Maggie's phone would be handled at approximately 8.53 and 15 seconds until 8.55 and 32 seconds, where it records 59 steps and at 8.54 and 54 seconds, the camera on the iPhone would activate for one second because the phone sees a face, but it doesn't unlock, meaning that the shooter who most likely is Alex, is handling her phone. At 8.55 and 52 seconds, her phone has one more orientation change than is most likely put away in a pocket. It's unclear what happens next, but going off data from the cell phone and SUV data, I will put together the most likely scenario. So knowing that the shooter would be covered in blood spatter and gunshot residue, it's assumed Alex would then start cleaning up either starting with the hose by the kennels and then returning back to the house. Alex's phone would become active again at approximately 9.02 p.m. Between 9.02 and 9.06, his phone records 283 steps in just four minutes. The last time he had that same number of steps, it took him 10 minutes. So this could mean he was running around the home cleaning up. He would call his wife's phone at 9.04 and twice at 9.06, but of course, she would not be able to answer. Also, at 9.06 and 12 seconds, Maggie's phone would be handled with an orientation change. I believe this is Alex grabbing Maggie's phone after cleaning up and exiting the home and entering the SUV as it would be started at 9.06 and 44 seconds. Alex would leave at 9.06 and 50 seconds and would head to his mother's house. As Alex leaves his property, he would have to take a right. And at this moment, about a quarter mile down the road from his property, he would most likely toss Maggie's phone out the window. The SUV data would record a high acceleration just after the phone was tossed. Alex's drive to his mother's in Almeida took only 16 minutes as he would reach high speeds in his SUV. Alex would arrive at approximately 9.22 p.m. He would be seen by the caretaker wearing a white t-shirt, green cargo shorts, and brown shoes. 
She also noticed he had something blue crumpled up like a tarp. It is unclear if he had a blue tarp or a blue poncho, but considering the caretaker was convinced she saw a tarp and that sled recovered a raincoat, there was two items, and I believe the guns could have been wrapped inside the raincoat, which would explain the large amount of gunshot residue, but that is just my speculation. Now, after spending 21 minutes at his mother's house, Alex left at 9.43 p.m. Heading back home during the ride back, he would call and text Maggie's phone at 9.45 and 9.47. Once again, on the ride back to his home, he would reach high speeds. Then he would arrive back home at approximately 10 p.m. Looking at the data, the SUV would be put in park at approximately 10.01 p.m., and then Alex may have pretended to check the house for three minutes before putting the SUV back into drive at approximately 10.04, then driving over to the kennels, which took just over a minute, arriving at the kennels at 10.05 and 55 seconds, where he would pretend to first discover the bodies of Paul and Maggie and check on them before attempting to call 911 at 10.06 and 14 seconds but misdials and retries and successfully calls at 10.06 and 18 seconds. But that would only allow Alex 19 seconds to check on two bodies, which we did a reenactment of the scene. And, uh, actually, I think I tried to turn Paul over first. Um, uh, you know, I tried to turn him over, and uh, I don't know, I figured it out. Um, uh, his cell phone popped out of his pocket. I started to try to do something with it, thinking maybe, but then I put it back down really quickly. Um, then I went to my wife, and I, uh, I mean, I could see. Mm -hmm. As we can see, it took at least 37 seconds to check on the two bodies, according to how Alex explained it. We know the 911 call was made using the Bluetooth from the SUV and the phone. While Alex was in the SUV, you do hear an echo for the first 30 seconds of the 911 call. Alex, mother, at 4147 Moselle Road, I need the police to pass us immediately. My wife and child just got badly. Then Alex would exit his vehicle while on the phone with 911 and then we'd know he's at the kennels because you could hear the barking of the dogs in the background. What color is your house on the outside? Uh, it's white. You can't see it from the road. Okay, is it a house or a mobile home? It's a house. He then would drive to the house at 10, 11, and 45 seconds to get back to the house, supposedly to retrieve a shotgun. Then at 10, 13, and 39 seconds, he drives back to the kennels where first responders would arrive sometime shortly after that. Steve and I have spent a lot of time in research putting this together, so please smash that like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel. Consider supporting this channel by becoming a member, and thank you all so much.